So here at the Arm Tech Con 2011. So what is the latest news with the Mali Graphics? Well, Mali Graphics is uh, obviously the, the year for us has been one of uh, building a lot of volume. Uh, we're in the Galaxy, the Samsung Galaxy S2 uh, smartphone, which some people have been saying is the, the world's best smartphone at the moment, and volume's ramping up from that. So it's been a year of uh, design wins and uh, ramping volume. And we're working very hard and showing the capabilities of the Mali technology. And you know, here at TechCon 2011, we have a whole bunch of demos based on Mali 400, including uh, we've just gone public with uh, an exclusive uh, gaming tech demo from uh, Six Hits, uh, which we can show you downstairs in the main hall. All right. So there's a 3D game. Yeah. So this is um, a, a tech. Uh, demonstrator game that's been released by uh, a partner of the Mali Architecture Six Hits. It's called Eon Sky, The Adventures of Alexa Bloom. And here we have this is available for everybody today. It's released, uh, downloadable from the Android Marketplace. And we can see it. Uh, and it's the product of uh, a lot of effort going into building the Mali ecosystem around uh, the leading handset uh, for Android, which is the Galaxy S2. So we have a. So this game is exclusively available on uh, on the Samsung Galaxy S2, which is powered by the Mali 400. Yeah. So in which way does it use uh, graphics power that you might not see elsewhere? So the great thing about these games is, is the complexity of the shaders and the real-time reflections that you can see. So as you move around, you can see the real-time reflections in the water. Okay, and that's, that's what we're getting. It's that kind of capability that we're bringing. It's, it, it's kind of, it seems quite small, but the reality you're bringing to the perception of the viewer yeah. is what it's all about. And this is where programmable shaders come in. It's where Mali 400 and OpenGL ES2 is very powerful. And are you showing some, uh, what is this? So this is um, a uh, uh, gesture demo. This is a gesture demo. Simon's running it. I'm going to try and stay out of the field of view of the, yeah. of the Clifford box. And this is a, a combination of things, but we're showing what a Mali 400 can do on a big screen yeah, in terms of the capabilities for gesture control, graphic interfaces. So this is the modern UI. This is the future of, of UIs with gesture going. So this, this is uh, running on what? So this is running on an Exynos, Samsung Exynos platform. This is Dual A9 and Quad Mali 400. All right. And what do you have on the other side here of the wall? Okay, so we, have, we have some more demos. And <coughs> so here we have uh, a whole bunch of demos. Uh, we start across on the top right hand corner with GL Benchmark 2.5. This is produced by Kashanti. It's the standard, the new benchmark from Kashanti for showing how, how, um, how, the, uh, how the performance of graphics is going. And you can see this has moved on a long way from GL Benchmark 2 which is um, where we've added all of the reflections and the reflective material into the, and a lot more detail in the textures. Is it important to tweak uh, benchmarks to get the best results? No, I think the key thing about benchmarks is that they're reproducible and consistent. Um, we, we trust Kashanti, we work closely with these guys because they're able to deliver benchmarks which are built on uh, standard APKs and deliverable across uh, a whole ecosystem of devices. So Kashanti for us are, at the moment are very much the mobile benchmark um, choice okay. of choice, yeah. Because it's not, it's the same for everyone. We, yeah. We're just looking for an even playing field for us to be able to download a standard benchmark, which you don't mess with, you don't alter in any way. You run it the same as everybody else, and your benchmark scores are then credible uh, and reproducible. So here's a, a tech demo uh, in the middle here, uh, which was produced by our own ARM demo team in Trondheim. Uh, These are the Mali guys, and they they produced this. And this is a story about Thor and his hammer. Uh, you know, there's a lot of Norwegian background from the founding of the Phalanx, which was the company behind Mali when ARM acquired it in 2006. And if you look at the character and the detail and the animation available in this, you can see that the quality is better than that you would find on the PS2. So for definitely better than PS2. Okay. And uh, in terms of the texture that we're delivering, yes. In terms of the texture quality you're delivering, in terms yeah. of the poly count that you're pushing, and you've also got um, anti full screen anti aliasing turned on, which the PS2 So and here is we just showed the uh, 
the game downloadable onto the Galaxy S2, but this is the full screen 720p version of the same game. And underneath here, there's a whole range of UIs available from different companies showing the introduction of Mali into the DTV space and to the set top box spaces where these UIs will become more common with over the top um, uh, internet connected smart TVs. So UIs here from Fluffy Spider and from Mentor Graphics and then NDS. Um, set top box. These guys are big in um, conditional access and they're building their own UI into set top boxes. And this is where we're going with Mali today. So I talked earlier, I said, you know, we've had a good year in terms of design wins, uh, not just into mobile, but also into uh, digital TV and set-top box. So we've got a lot of, a lot of set-top box and di digital TV design wins over the last year, and uh, Mali's going to become very, very prevalent there. So here at the conference, in the last couple of weeks, there's been some uh, new announcement, like quite huge announcement yeah. by ARM, right? That's right. So how's the graphics going on uh, with that? So we're not announcing uh, to anything uh, new here today, uh, though watch this space over the next few weeks. Um, but today, and over the last couple of weeks, we've got announcements on the new 64-bit uh, ARM CPU architecture, the announcement of the Cortex-A7, and the big little combination of CPUs with a cache coherent interconnect. And this is all part of the big story that we're joining up. This is why ARM Graphics is being able to leverage all of that power. So uh, Mali for, the Mali T604, which we announced last year, uh, takes less CPU power uh, to drive the uh, graphical content through it. So it's a great pairing with the Cortex-A7 little processor. We don't need the full power of the Cortex-A15 to drive that, 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 that software. So that's a major advantage over our competition. And last year we announced the T604, which has a cache coherent interconnect, and now, of course, we can plug that in together with the big little combination of Cortex-A7 and Cortex-A15. And, and again, last year people said, well, why has Mali T604 got a 64-bit internal architecture? And I think now you're beginning to see uh, the, the joined-up story we have here of, of where we're going. That high-end graphics processor is going to be paired with uh, a high-end CPU uh, in devices with an awful lot of memory fitted. And of course, once you get over the 4 gigabyte uh, uh, address space limit, then it gets an awful lot easier if you've got native 64-bit addressing. And that's already there with the Mali T600 series. So the T604 on the Cortex A7 is different from the one on A15, or similar, or how does it work? Uh, the GPU will be identical. We have the scalable architecture, so you can uh, take a Mali T600 series uh, and uh, scale it down to a, a low price point, or scale it up to a very high performance point. So yeah, it's the same, same GPU could be used with the A7 or used with the A15, or in a big little combination where both CPUs are fitted, and uh, one or other is used uh, to, to, to drive the performance, CPU performance required at a, at a power saving methodology. So uh, how high can it go? Um, well, we, we, with a, a four core Mali T604, um, full up I, is, is uh, going to dwarf anything you've seen here today. All of them combined? Oh yeah. All right. Uh, so. Like a little device in the, in the pocket is definitely going to disrupt the console video games industry. Well, of course, they're not standing still either. So uh, just as we're developing to a higher performance point, they're going to move the goalpost as well. So certainly uh, we can perform higher than today's consoles. Uh, but of course, by the time we get out there, they're going to scale up as well. So what happens when you go down to 28 nanometer, when you go down even further down? down you get 20, more space 22. on the die or what happens? We get more space on the die. Um, GPU is probably going to account for a greater percentage of the silicon area in future. Uh, and so the uh, area spent, the efficiency of that area uh, is, is incredibly important. One of the metrics that we're coming to talk about more these days is not just total performance, it's performance per uh, square millimeter of silicon and performance per milliwatt, because actually that's of course what we're all about. We've ARM's always been about the low power architecture, low power for CPU, and, and also very importantly, low power for GPU. So when you have a certain amount of power you can use, the CPU cannot, uh, you cannot crank it up, so you basically use the rest for the GPU? 
So for a, gra for a domain specific problem uh, like graphics or for video, uh, the most power efficient way of doing that is obviously with a, a dedicated processor. So we can, we can do video decode uh, on our video processors, we can do graphics processing on our graphics processors uh, in, in a more power efficient fashion. Alright, and uh, you're also going to accelerate computing? Of course. So the Mali T600 series, one of the new features we uh, introduced is the ability to use the GPU itself for fully programmable computing uh, through the OpenCL uh, API, uh, Direct Compute from Microsoft, and increasingly, of course, RenderScript from Google. So uh, Google have introduced RenderScript as their method of uh, unleashing the power of GPU computing, and they've set some very, very high uh, requirements in terms of precision requirements on the GPU and Mali T600 is uh, absolutely well, well suited to match and exceed all of those precision requirements. And we're in a very, very good position there with respect to the competition, all of whom are left a bit, bit stunned, I think, at this point. Is there a risk that most of the world's computing is going to be done on GPU, not CPU? <laughs> I think not. I think there's plenty of life in the ARM CPU business yet. Um, the GPU computing will always be a bit of a specialist niche and uh, general purpose uh, programming will continue to be based on the CPU, I'm sure, for some years to come. The future version of Android are just going to use more and more GPU or are they going to stop the bloat? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, I, like. Uh, I think you'll find future versions of uh, Android, well, you should really be talking to, that, to Google about this, but I think you'll find that Android is increasingly tuning its use of the appropriate resources. So where it's appropriate, run on a CPU. Where it's appropriate, run on a GPU. It's all about doing the computation in the most efficient place. Efficient for power, of course. And uh, how big is augmented reality and all that going to be? And the GPU is really, really needed, right? right? So I think it's one of the use cases that you're going to see for that uh, GPU computing requirement. I mean, there, there are plenty of others. Augmented reality is one that gets people very excited because it's, it's very uh, visible. You can show it in a demo like this and people get really interested. We've got an augmented reality demo here. Uh, Simon can show you. Uh, yeah. but, but also... Um, a simple bill of materials reduction. So if you do a bit of processing on a GPU to sharpen up an image uh, that enables you to fit a cheaper sensor to your phone, uh, you know, these sorts of things, whilst less, uh, less immediately obviously d d demonstrable, these are things that really make a difference. But augmented reality is a good way to kind of demonstrate that you need more GPU power. Yes, right? yeah, I think that's right. A augmented reality is something that you can do really, really well uh, with GPU computing in a way that uh, you, you can't do so well simply using a CPU.